Storm rides the tide of positivity after she quells a lethal disaster. But will the truth hurt or help when they find out what really caused the disaster? And is Storm really running for Congress? Let's find out in our review of Storm number one from Marvel Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Storm number one. You know, Tom Brevoort's From the Ashes era for the X title started with some uncertainty and maybe a few bad starts just to be generous about it. And also to be generous, it hasn't improved a whole lot. With every new title that is released, Brevoort has an opportunity to show he's the right man to right the ship left floundering by Jordan White. Unfortunately, Storm Number 1 by Moreo Ayudeli, I hope I'm saying that right, moves the ship not really in the right direction. So let's jump right in. Storm number one begins with Aurora making an exceptionally aristocratic appearance for a press conference to announce something. It's long been rumored she's running for Congress. Some of the external Marvel materials have suggested she's running for Congress, but she doesn't outright say that. So whether or not the press conference was intended to be an announcement for Congress or not is a little unclear. After her actions in a recent incident gave Americans a more positive outlook on mutants, Aurora decides to take advantage of that positive sentiment by stepping into a position to make a big announcement. Ayudeli's tale starts off on a somewhat odd note. Storm has always carried herself with grace, poise, and an air of nobility, that's for sure. But the way she's presented in the opening pages leans a little too far into an air of sort of royal condescension. Maybe that royal air is an after effect of her time as the Queen of Mars, but regardless of the reason, it's somehow off-putting and doesn't feel in line with her character. There's a, a little bit of a lack of humility, a little bit of a lack of groundedness to her character. Here she just comes off as sort of lofty and above it all, and I mean that figuratively and literally. Through a flashback, we see what led to those positive feelings towards the mutants. An explosion at a nuclear plant in Oklahoma devastated the surrounding areas. Worse, the explosive shockwaves aren't stopping, they're coming in periodic waves. Storm and Frenzy, who just so happen to be there, go to the disaster site. Frenzy begins the rescue and evacuation efforts, while Storm counteracts the shockwaves on her way to the source to figure out what's going on. Odd character presentation is one thing. Now we give way to weird, nonsensical action. Without getting into the physics of shockwaves, which are really spikes through mediums, they're not pushes. Iodeli somehow concluded Storm could block and deflect a shockwave with wind power. Even if you were to go with Storm's actions as successful, she could only deal with the shockwave portion in front of her, so she misses out on the devastation spreading out in 360 degrees in the shape of a sphere. In other words, the big rescue that forms the foundation of Storm's choices for the rest of the comic can't and won't work. Ayudeli either didn't do his research about how shockwaves work, or didn't think much of the reading audience. When Storm gets to the heart of the explosive shockwaves, she finds a young mutant in the center of the reactor and he's lost control of his powers. Everyone around him is dead, and he begs Storm to kill him. Instead, Storm settles him down with a big, loving, motherly hug. That's pretty much all the action you're going to get in this comic. The scene then cuts back to the present, where Storm is continuing her press conference. She's secretly hiding the fact that she suffers from radiation poisoning incurred or absorbed during the rescue from the young mutant who couldn't control his powers. Instead, she announces that her platform is one of sanctuary for anyone who needs it via her flying nature preserve hovering directly over the city like an invading overlord. But Storm has a choice to make. Reveal to the public the real cause of the explosion and reverse positive mutant sentiment, or keep the reason a secret and let the dead engineers in the nuclear plant take the fall. Ultimately, Storm chooses truth, which sets her candidacy or bid for Congress or just whatever positive announcement she was trying to make back by a lot. The issue ends with a cosmic force taking notice of Storm's choice, which could lead to bigger and better or maybe even worse things in the future. So overall, Storm number one is a strange issue, maybe even bizarre at some points. Storm's personality comes across as more royal than noble, and there's a difference there. It's subtle, but it's noticeable. Her rescue scene is nonsensical on multiple levels, and her show of benevolence by placing a floating sanctuary and animal preserve directly over the city couldn't look more ominous if she tried. So, final thoughts, what do we think about Storm number one? Honestly, it just doesn't need to exist, at least not what the story that's being presented here. 
Ferrero Ayudeli's voice for Aurora is somehow off-putting and really just strangely not in line with her character. The action is illogical, and Storm's bid for Congress, or whatever it is she's trying to announce, gets off to a very bad start through her own actions. This isn't the worst From the Ashes debut by a long shot. I mean, that award probably still goes to Dazzler number one, but it sure won't help you appreciate or like the titular character. Therefore, Storm number one earns a 5.5 out of 10. Not a terrible start by any stretch, but it's really just not a very good start, and one that doesn't really hook you for whatever comes next. I mean, literally, there's no hook. Well, maybe there is, but we'll see, depending on your interpretation of the last page. So, what do you think? I want your opinion. I want you to tell me, what do you think of the From the Ashes era so far? We've had about 9 or 10 books come out, and all of them have been either mixed to terrible to just okay. We haven't really had a solid, super-duper, undeniable winner yet. That's my opinion. I want to know your opinion about that. So, if you'd like to read the written review, the link is in the description below. Also, there's a link to buy this comic if you are a Super Duper Storm fan and you need to have this issue. So go ahead and give that link a click, purchase a comic, that helps support the channel. That would be much appreciated. So thank you very much for joining. Stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.